ahead and talk about how we're going to add a caption manually now that we're in the book module. Um, in the first video of this series, I showed you how to automatically add captions that were already in the metadata of a file. But if you haven't gone and captioned all your files, which I don't expect most people have, you can also just add a caption at any point in time. So you can see here that I can add a caption to either the photograph itself or I can add a caption down here, a page caption. And both of these are controlled over here in the caption panel. So you can see I can toggle on and off the photo caption. And let's just go ahead and put in the alleyways of Venice. Now, just to be clear, the caption that I've just entered is only associated with this book. It is not actually in the metadata of the image itself. If I wanted to add this as part of the metadata, then I would go back to the library module and in the metadata panel, I would add in the caption there. So if you were going to use one photograph and you wanted the same caption in, you know, multiple books or in a book and a slideshow, don't manually enter it here. Go ahead and enter it into the metadata of the file. Now we could also just cut that and not have a photo caption, but instead we could have a page caption. And this can be quite handy if you've got multiple images up and maybe they all are, have the same or similar captions. So again, we could just type in that caption here. And of course we can use the type panel to change the size and everything. We can also offset it. We can put the caption at the top of the page or down at the bottom of the page. So lots of customization you can do. Um, if you add a lot of text, then the caption area for your text will actually grow as well. So that's really nice. Okay, let's move to another page layout here. I want to just scroll down and let's take a look at this spread right here. So what I would like to do on the left hand side here is I would actually like to add a background image. So if we scroll all the way down here to background and you'll notice I've been doing a lot of scrolling lately. I actually prefer to put my panels in what's called solo mode. So I can right mouse click there and choose solo mode and that way only the panel that I click on is going to be open. So that prevents me from having to scroll up and down a lot. Okay, so I wanted to add a background here. Now, because I only have a page selected, I can go ahead and add a background to just this page. So let's use our film strip and we will navigate and find the image that we want to use for our background. And we can just drag and drop that photo right there and you can see that it's actually screened back. If we don't like that image, just drag and drop another image here and it would automatically replace it. Of course, we can change the opacity of this. We can make it more or less opaque. If we don't want a graphic, we can just right mouse click and say remove photo. We can also use this drop down menu in order to actually choose from a few templates. Like we have some maps here. So if you were doing a travel book and we have some, some small glyphs and stuff, if you were doing a wedding album and you could just click to add any of those. I'm going to go ahead and keep my photograph instead. So let's just drag and drop that photo on. Oh, if I didn't have a photo, sorry, if I remove that, I just want to show you that you can also change your background color. So if you actually wanted to put black there, we could do that as well. All right, excellent. One other thing to point out right down here, you'll notice on top of each of the thumbnails in the film strip, there's a little one icon that tells me that I have used that image once in my book. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out, Command or Control E. I want to talk a little bit about favorites because as you create your book, as you scroll through it, you'll probably see that you're using kind of the same set of templates over and over. Now here I kind of tried to use every template possible, but I imagine that you will kind of find ones that you like more than others. So what you can do is go to the page panel. Now you'll notice I don't have any pages selected because if I do and I click to like add a page, it will add a page right after that page. Um, if I have no pages selected, it would actually add a page at the end. And in fact, I'm not going to actually add a page to my book right now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add a template to my favorites. So the way that I would do that is I would use this little disclosure triangle here and I would come and find the template that I like. So let's say for example, I go to four photos and there's a four up page template that I like. It's this one right here. I'm not going to click on it because if I click on it, then Lightroom's going to add that page. What I'll do instead is I will right mouse click on it and then I'm going to add that to my favorites. 
So now that it's been added to my favorites, when we click on the favorites up here, you can see that there it is. And one important thing to know about favorites is that they're actually saved by book size. So if I go and create a bunch of books that are seven by seven inches, I can have a different set of favorites for that, which really makes sense because you'll probably have different favorites for landscape books and uh, portrait books and square books. All right, now, it was a little bit of a mystery to me how to get a template out of my favorite. So just know that in this same location, if you were to right mouse click on a template that's already in your favorites, you can then remove that layout from your favorites. All right, so obviously these favorites play an important role when you're adding your pages here because it can make it a lot quicker. But let me show you where else they come into play. And that's in the auto layout. So remember, when we first went in here, we edited our auto layout preset. Well, for a lot of you who like to kind of mix it up a little bit more, who kind of want Lightroom to randomize your layout, right? Unlike me, who you notice had very controlled, two vertical, two horizontal, that was my layout. But for those of you who kind of are more spontaneous, instead of adding a fixed layout, you can actually choose a random layout from favorites. And you can pick, because you might have like some favorites that have one image per or two image per or three image per page. You can actually tell Lightroom, well, I want you to randomize maybe just the single image and two image and three image, but don't randomize the four image. Or you can say, yes, absolutely include that as well. The only thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to include all of these if you don't actually have favorites. Like if you've never picked a favorite that has four images up, don't select this because otherwise it'll give you an error message when it tries to generate the book. So just make sure that you actually have favorites in all of these categories here. All right, so that's another reason for favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here right now because I did mention that I would talk to you about how you can kind of trick Lightroom if you can't find a template and you really want one. So for example, I happen to really want a template because I was doing a square book. I wanted a template that had nine images up. And so when I was looking here under page, I was looking at, you know, that would be three by three. So I looked under three photos first. Well, that was silly because that's three per page. So then I came here to multiple photos, but I didn't find one that actually had nine photos up in it. So what I did instead was I went to the print module and I just created a template. You can see right here, in fact, let's go ahead and just select nine images here. And it really doesn't matter which nine, but what I did is in the print template, I just created a page that was nine by nine inches. Of course, you can create whatever size you want, so seven by seven, or I just thought that in one of the larger square books, I wouldn't want it to fill the whole page, so I made it a little bit smaller. And then I went to my layout and I just used the rows and columns. I could have gone in here and added a little bit of vertical or horizontal uh, cell spacing. I could go to my page layout here and not include a background color if I wanted a white border. Anyway, you can see that I can actually use the print module in order to create a JPEG file, right? Most people think that they have to print to a printer, but you don't. If we scroll down and go to print job, you can see that I have the print set to a JPEG file. So you can actually create whatever kind of template you want. And right now, look at this is just simply using the single image contact sheet layout style, but I don't have to do this. I could go to my custom package and then I could put however many images on a single page anywhere and then just import that JPEG, right? Because we would export it from here and then it would be on your hard drive and then you could import it into Lightroom and then just bring it into the book module and lay it out as one of your pages. So that's kind of a nice workaround. I mean, yeah, maybe you're thinking you're constrained by the templates, but not really because we have this whole print module that you can also use. All right, finally, let's just go back to the book module for one second. I just want to um, say that at this point, you could either send the book to Blurb or you could export the book to PDF. Now, I typically export the book to PDF just because it kind of makes like a nice proof for me. I, I might export it and just kind of print it and just go through everything and make through my captions are all right and everything and just kind of sit on the layout for a day. And then when I am ready, I will send the book to Blurb and have that printed. And don't forget, of course, if you do export the book to PDF, you can always um, use the Adobe Reader on your tablet, whether it's the Android or the iPad, and actually look at your book on that device as well.
Excellent. That wraps up the feature set in the new book module in Lightroom 4 Beta. I hope you guys will download it and play with it, and please let us know your feedback. Thanks so much for watching.